Hey everyone, in the last video I gave you a little walkthrough on how to get started with Pimeroni's Pico Explorer using the Raspberry Pi Pico board. I mentioned that I didn't really have anything in mind as far as demos went and we didn't really do anything that interesting in that tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to get started using MicroPython and I've picked up a little breakout garden board from Pimeroni. This is the BMP280, it's a temperature and pressure sensor from Bosch. So the intention is to get this up and running today with MicroPython and outputting the values of this board onto the OLED display. Getting started with MicroPython on the Pico is a lot easier than in our last video when we were using C, C++. We actually only need to install two things. We need to install the Thony Python IDE and we need to install Adafruit Ampy tool, which allows us to transfer files to and from the Pico without much effort. We don't actually need Ampy, but it does make life slightly easier. So we're going to install that as well. We'll start by going and downloading Thony. So let's head to thony.org. And then setup is fairly straightforward. And now we'll install Ampy using the pip tool. So open up the command prompt and type in pip3 install adafruit amp To test if that all worked correctly, just type in amp and hopefully you should get the help file. And then the final thing we're going to do is download Pimeroni's MicroPython firmware for Pico. We're going to use Pimeroni's version rather than the official Raspberry Pi version since it already has all their libraries that we'll need later on. So head to Pimeroni's GitHub And from there, open up the Pimeroni Pico repository. And on the right, click on releases. We're going to download 0.0.8 .0 alpha since that's the latest release as of this tutorial. And we just need to download this UF2 file. As in our last video, connect your Pico to the computer and hold down the boot select pin while you do so. We then just need to copy that file into the mass storage device that appears. The board will then reset and we have our MicroPython environment ready to go. Let's close this and open up Thony. And once open, go to Run, Select Interpreter, and ensure that this is set to MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. Then ensure the port is set, set to Try to Detect Port Automatically, or select the port if it's already appeared, and then click OK. It should automatically connect to the MicroPython environment on our Raspberry Pi, and we can test this by turning the onboard LED on. So type in from machine import pin. We'll then set the pin, which on the Pico board is pin 25. And then let's just toggle that on. We've now got our MicroPython environment set up. Let's download some of Pimeroni's examples and program them to the board. So head to Pimeroni's GitHub again. Click on the Pimeroni Pico repository. And this time, let's just download the code. Let's open up the directory that was downloaded to and go into MicroPython examples and then Pico Explorer since that's obviously the board we're using. We're then going to open up the rainbow code and click on run. So we've now got our first MicroPython demo up and running but let's make this a little bit more interesting and use the breakout board I discussed at the start and output the temperature and pressure values to the onboard OLED display. I'm going to be using an existing MicroPython library that someone's created on GitHub and I'll leave a link down below so you can access that as well. And then we're going to incorporate that into the existing MicroPython code that we've already got. So let's head to that GitHub repository. And from there we can see the library here. This is the one that we're going to be using. We're now going to copy that library to the board using Adafruit's Ampy tool. But first we need to disconnect Thony from the board, otherwise it'll interfere with the COM port. So head into Thony and under Run, 
click disconnect. Then open up a command prompt and let's navigate to the directory where that library is. Once there, we need to select the COM port that Ampy's going to connect to. In my case, it's COM8. Then type in Ampy put bmp280.py. That'll then upload our library to our board and we can test to see if that worked correctly by typing ampls to list all the files on our board. You can see now that the only file on there is the bmp280 library. So let's head back into Thonny and let's adapt our rainbow code to include the bmp280 and show the temperature and pressure on the OLED display. We first need to import the i2c and pin library. And then just above our while loop, add the following code. This sets up an I2C bus on bus 0, sets the clock and data pin, and then it'll scan that bus to see what devices are on there. Click on stop to restart the back end, and then let's save and run. As you can see, we've got the device 0x76, which is the address of our BMP280. Now that we've got that working, let's go back to the original code and see if we can pull in the actual data we need. We can see here what the example code is, so let's import this. So we've now got all our setup code just before our while loop. And if we scroll down in amongst our normal code, we'll just be printing out the temperature and the pressure. Before we can run this, we first need to correct the line at the top, which imports the library, as we need to import everything. Otherwise, these definitions down here won't actually work correctly. And we also need to stop the current code running by clicking stop. Let's save and run and we can see we're now outputting both the temperature and the pressure. If I put my finger over the BMP280, you'll see the temperature start to rise slightly. Let's click stop, and let's do something a bit more useful with this. Let's take this line and remove all of this and change it to string and then BMP temperature. Then let's remove this line and just comment out this line for now. Let's run this one again. And you can now see our temperatures being directly outputted to the OLED display. Let's add the pressure in as well. Click stop to stop the current code and let's click run. And there we have it, we're outputting both the temperature and the pressure onto the OLED display using MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. The final thing for us to do is to save this directly to the Raspberry Pi Pico. That way it'll automatically run whenever we add power, rather than us having to open up Thonny and click run from there. So within Thonny, first click stop so that we're no longer running our code, and then click file, save as, and select Raspberry Pi Pico. We can then see the files within our Raspberry Pi Pico. Let's save this as main.py so that it automatically runs when the Raspberry Pi Pico turns on and click OK. We can now close Thonny and if we remove power from our Pico Pi and re-add it, you'll see that the demo jumps right into action. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you like the video, leave a like, subscribe for more and I'll see you next time.